Kia ora and welcome to the Mountain Safety Council's Alpine Snow Skills Series. In this five-part series, we'll be talking to a professional mountain guide from the New Zealand Mountain Guides Association. He'll be teaching us basic alpine skills for snow slopes and winter terrain. Keep in mind that this video is not designed to replace a training course or hands-on practical experience. We recommend taking an alpine skills course from a professional provider or learning directly from competent friends or family. Since you'll potentially be in avalanche terrain, make sure to understand the current avalanche forecast for the region you'll be in. Carry the necessary avalanche rescue equipment and know how to use it. And get the training and knowledge to avoid avalanche hazards. For more info, go to avalanche.net.nz. So, Dave, what's the first thing that I need to know before I start using crampons? First thing you need to know when you're looking at crampons is your footwear. We've got two ends of the spectrum. We've got the classic running shoe, perfect for trail running and for crossings that don't involve snow. But as you can see, it's got a lot of flex, not the one to use crampons with. Then you've got the other end of the spectrum. You've got boots, so I'm wearing technical mountaineering boots. They have got zero flex in the sole. They are designed specifically for alpine terrain and for using any kind of crampon with, from the most technical to the lightest. In between that, you also have a whole bunch of um, tramping boots of various stiffness. The middle to stiff type of tramping boot is completely suitable for, um, for crampons. If you can put your foot down and bend your toe like that, you've probably not got the right boot for um, most types of crampons. Next thing you'll need to look at is choosing the crampon type for the trip that you're doing and the footwear you have. So I've got a couple of types here. The ones that I use most for these technical boots I'm wearing is a rapid fix, very stiff. There's no give in that whatsoever. And that's a Mountaineer's crampon, a little bit heavier. Then I've got a lighter crampon that has got a little bit of flex to it. So this is suitable for a sturdy tramping boot right through to a stiff climbing boot. And this has a strap-on attachment, this one has a clip-on attachment. So next thing we need to do is work out how to put them on our feet. Number one, spiky side goes down, otherwise you get very sore feet. Number two, put them down flat, extend them out. Before you go, you should extend them, check them out for the size of your boot. You need the metal posts, front and back, you'll need your toe of your boot in between them, the heel of your boot in between those ones. This is better done flat on the snow than pulling them on like if you're in a seated position on a chair or on a rock, so that you do get the toe in between those posts, the heel in between the back posts. The strap and the two rings goes on the outside of your boot to reduce trip hazard. Put it through the front. At this stage, you don't have to tighten hard. Then you can take your strap put it through the inside and pull it over your ankle. Once here, there's two rings here, you pass the strap through both of them and double it back in between the two of them, a bit like an old fashioned motorcycle helmet. At this stage, you can start tightening up. Give a crank here, crank there, and tighten up your straps so it's nice and secure and then your crampons nicely fitting on your boot. If I have excess I will wrap this excess around the outside part of the strap. The reason we do it on the outside as I mentioned is to avoid any tripping hazard. You don't want anything on the inside of your boots that would um, catch on another crampon. So a couple of wraps, just tie it off and that's not going anywhere. So one of the things I do recommend is buying a crampon that has a rubberized, what we call an anti-balling plate. So both of these of mine have balling plates on the bottom. And this stops, particularly when it's warm and the snow's getting sticky, 
the snow can ball up underneath your crampon and that reduces the effectiveness of the, um, the spikes. So that helps to eject that. It's a good thing to have in a crampon. So this second type of crampon, stiffer, it has a lever at the back and we call this a rapid fix crampon. Again, the bale system, different companies, different models will have various systems of this. Some of them are wire, some of them are rubberized bales like this, and some of them are combinations. So, the same basic premise. Extend it, put it down flat. You still need your boot to go between the bales at the front, bales at the back. Down flat, stand in it. In this crampon, I pick the lever up, so you'll hear a click. And now you'll see my crampon's on. I haven't done up my strapping, but if you give that a little tug, yep. it's not going anywhere even without the strapping. So it makes me feel very comfortable when I'm in exposed ground. It's also fast. So this just goes through the front. The exact same as the other one, goes through both rings doubles back. The excess is slightly shorter on this because I use this crampon primarily with these or similar boots but there's still a little bit of excess and again it's on the outside of the boot that I tie it off to reduce any trip hazard. And there I have my crampon on, good to go for an alpine adventure. You've run us through the differences between both crampons. Would you say that it's just down to preference as to which one we use, or are there different terrains that we would choose which one? The both is the right answer. It is a preference, personal preference. It's a trip preference, terrain, and crucially, the boots. So if I'm doing alpine technical climbing, I'll be wearing these. If I'm doing um, the ball pass or a trekking um, pass, I'm carrying my crampons for two to three days and I'm wearing them for a four or five hour stint. I'm gonna pick a lighter, um, more suitable for my tramping boots. Um, and so it's, it's a combination between the terrain, your preference, and crucially your footwear. Fantastic. All right, well I'm gonna get my crampons on and then you can teach me how to walk. Cool. Before we start walking, we need to learn how to choose the safest route. So click on over to the next episode where we'll learn all about route selection. Remember, practical training before you head out will help reinforce the skills you'll need and address the hazards that you'll encounter in alpine terrain. For a list of training providers and for more information, head to the Mountain Safety Council website.